what the positive community can do for your mental well-being. In Stimulus 7, a meditation done from Marcus Aurelius, Marcus Aurelius states, the power which rules within us when it stays accordant with its nature, so acts in every occurrence as easily to adopt itself to all present or possible situations. It requires no set material to work upon, but under proper reservation, means by the inciting to pursue and make matter for its activities out of every proposition. This quote by Marcus Aurelius claims that humans can quickly adopt to and or modify themselves in certain situations to best work, but it is best when everything is in accordance or in harmony. The question is, when is everything best in harmony with each other? In your mind, with what environment around you helps to adopt best to other things? The answer to this is a positive community. A positive community involvement uh, increases humans' overall mental health and increases people's quality of life around them, which improves key qualities of their growth. In Stimulus 2, Nelson Mandela's Long Walk to Freedom, expert from Chapter 60, he talks about how while in prison, he would not be able he would not have been able to do it alone, and he needed a community in order to thrive. In this, in the article, he states that our, our overall understanding and our understanding of what authorities were attempting to do, and sharing that understanding with each other, it would be very hard, if not possible, for one man alone to resist. I don't know that I could have done it and had it I been alone. This experience of Nelson Mandela shows how it is different. How in a difficult time he was able to thrive because of the community surrounding him. This is one of many examples that shows how a community can affect someone through a negative experience. A study conducted on how differently affected communities harness their resources to adopt to the aftermath of the flood. Colin Bakken and Dean Adjutovic, two PhDs from the University of Zucre, concluded that this study provides evidence that people affected by disasters can harness their individual, interpersonal, and community resources to recover and adopt. Post-disaster interventions should aim to strengthen family and community ties, thus increasing available social support and community connectedness. This, once again, provides a real-life example of how a community can improve your mental health and resilience. Being in a community is important during natural disasters and life-changing events. While, while, it is, while, while being in a community is important during natural disasters and life-changing events, it is important in our daily lives. The Prevention Institution, which is a nonprofit charity that is run by the government, focuses on things like adverse community experience and resilience along with mental health and well-being. In their studies, they have found that building thriving communities help foster mental health and well-being for everyone. When community members feel connected and have safe places to gather, and when they have access to affordable housing and good jobs, they experience less stress and anxiety. This research from their studies provides a real world example of how the community is able to help to encourage positive mental health and well being. In this case, they found that when people are provided with strong, thriving communities, it helps them feel more connected and involved in their community. On top of this, they have found that when a person, especially low income, is provided with stable housing and a good job, they feel much less stress and anxiety throughout their lives. Less stress and anxiety also helps, also helps to provide a strong mental health that lowers the chance that someone experience them, experiencing mental health issues that help present, prevent the use of things like drugs and alcohol. This is shown in the research done by the Canadian Mental Health Foundation that states when, a, when we are mentally healthy, we enjoy our life and community and environment and the people in it. We, we can be creative, learn, try new things, and take risks. We are better able to cope with difficult times in our per, per, personal and professional lives. This study shows how being mentally healthy can help, can help us to enjoy our environment and help us be able more creative and able to try new things throughout our life, but, but being mentally healthy can help us to increase our resilience. This is shown in a series of studies done by Jill Study, a, a psychologist from the University of San Francisco, that states, studies have found that people who are happier have a strong purpose in life, 
or higher levels of self-efficiency. The belief that they have control over their situation seems to have an easier time recovering from a disaster. These studies show how along with many other things, being happier improves someone's overall resilience. Resilience is very important in times of sadness and disaster or disaster. For example, being resilient is important to have when something bad happens, like being fired and not getting a job. It is also important to have resilience through, throughout a community when someone is, something like an earthquake or astral disaster happens. In 2010, a series of earthquakes struck a small country in Haiti. In a research done in Stimulus No. 5 by Dr. Kikiel J. Rahman, a researcher from South Florida, and a large group of other researchers, it states, social science literature highlights the importance of resilience in relation to risk and trauma. In 2010, Haiti and earthquake compiled trauma for a nation that has endured slavery and bad leadership, structural violence, and poverty. Since 2010, various sources broadly describe Haitian survivors as resilient. This research gives real-world evidence of, of how resilience is shown. Having resilience because of a positive community help the people of, this, of the country band together to overcome this series of awful events. The Haiti people show how being resilient is very important and can be an important quality to possess on a daily basis. Although resilience can be good in many situations, many researchers say that it can also be bad. In Simulus number six, Thomas Confrizo, Drew Mazik, and Derek Lusk, both respected psychologists, state that too much resilience could make people overly tolerant or of adversity. At work, this can translate into putting up with boring or demoralizing jobs, and particularly bad bosses, for, for longer than needed. In addition, too much resilience can get in the way of leadership effectiveness and, by extension, team and or organizational effectiveness. These psychologists both provide an unpopular opinion that could be true for a certain perspective. This the statement shows how if you have too much resilience, it can affect your ability to quit things when you need to, and this can make you make you stick with things like bad jobs for a long for too long. Although this might be, this does not give evidence to prove how resilience could be bad. In conclusion, the best way to improve your resilience and your mental well-being is to be in community. In the research paper by Steph Stephanie Gilbert, a researcher in psych uh, of, of psychology. She states, we're social beings and we are not meant to live in isolation. Community is crucial for us to thrive, especially for someone with mental illness who is already experiencing common symptoms of loneliness and isolation. All in all, a positive community involvement increases humans' overall mental health and increases people, people's quality of life around them with their resilience. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, Ronnie, did your research go in a different direction than you originally expected? So originally I was going to focus on resilience and how like, it can affect your daily lives, but then I changed it to more of how a community can affect your overall well-being and resilience, and that changed into what a positive community can do for your all-around life. Okay. And then... Um, how did you use the conclusions or questions of other people to advance your own research? So I use the conclusions and questions of other people uh, in my, my, all my research because some of the conclusions of like the Haiti and the stimulus, they stated that like a community can help people be more resilient. So I use that to base my research. Okay, great. Thank you.